Yeah. I'm John Warner. I own this quarter section with uh, this creek and another creek on it. And I have been fighting beavers ever since the 1970s when Evan first live trapped them and uh, turned them loose in the reserve. They came down the, that creek over there uh, has its beginning within the reserve. And uh, the beavers came down here within a year. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, I'm no beloved of beavers. Uh, I used to pasture this. I had a herd of dairy cows, and I used to use the, the, this for a pasture uh, as well as some of the rest of it. But because of the beavers, especially along the other fence along the other side of the creek, uh, I finally had to quit pasturing it because the beavers were dropping the trees across the fence all the time and the cattle would get out and I'd spend half a day rounding them up again. That's one reason I'm no lover of beavers. The other thing is, as I was telling you earlier, uh, they destroyed all the shrubs uh, like uh, black currants and uh, uh, Saskatoons, uh, uh, red currants. Uh, the raspberries just simply dried up and disappeared. I don't know why, but uh, there used to be quite a few of them along the edge of the creek, just on this first high ground here, but uh, they don't come anymore. As far as I'm concerned, uh, I would like to see this creek, this study of yours include the full half mile of creek because about 500 meters west of where your, your uh, study stops there's a place where the, a gas pipeline crosses the creek to get over to that gas well and join up with some others. Also still within the half mile there is a, a place where the Alberta, uh, gov Alberta government telephones has run a fiber optics line that goes all the way from south of Tofield uh, up to the Lamont Chipman area. And uh, you can see what happens where they cross the creek with equipment and how it has regrown. This first one where the gas line is was went through in around 1960 and the other one somewhere in the early 80s. But uh, it's made a surprising comeback. Now, I didn't come out here to run, have a, an interview that would uh, be something special. I came out here uh, just to try to get the rest of you acquainted with what is going on here. The beavers will build up a, a, a dam, clean out the trees, and move on somewhere else. That has happened this year. I think the beavers have moved out of this area across the road and are, are um, settling in over there. This will regrow and within five years they'll be back here again because there'll be uh, lots of saplings. Can you can you tell us a little bit about, you mentioned of course one of the sort of downsides of the beavers is they've cut the trees and the shrubs and then they move on and come back, but what about the water storage or water level changes you've seen over the years? Well, normally in those years there were no beaver dams. They had all been washed out years before. And the creek ran for about, oh, two months to three months a year at the most, and uh, then it was dry. Mm. We could, you could walk back and forth across the, oh. anywhere, and the cows did that. Mm -hmm. They would have a path across the creek. Right. There was one right over there where it's close to the fence, mm -hmm. and another one about maybe two or three hundred yards to the west, and so on. But it was a completely different feeling. The poplars had grown up. Uh, as I was saying, I cut some saw logs, mm -hmm. and there were a lot of smaller poplars 
as well as the, the uh, willows. And uh, it was like a park. The county came in here and said that they would try to uh, control the beavers for me. Now, my idea of control is slightly different from the county's, unfortunately, Mr. Reeve. Uh, I would like to see them gone. And I'd like to see the tree, like to see the trees grow up again. And then we, and the ability to pasture it be there so that uh, it is back to what it was when I was a boy. I know that's a faint hope because we'll never get those beavers out of here now. And so how did there you... is no demand for, for beaver hides. No. Uh, and I can see no other reason for any uh, definite uh, urge to go and shoot beavers because it's a godforsaken job. You've got to sit around here and just be as patient as a, uh, as a, a trapper. But <laughs> the whole thing is caused from the city of Edmonton life trapping the beavers, turning them loose in the reserve and letting them go. And it's back to where I would say that there's as many beavers here as there was in the days of the fur trade. Mm -hmm. yeah. From Edmonton? That was around 1970. In the 1970s, yeah. yeah and, and within two years they were down here. In that creek over there, because that creek runs from the reserve. Okay. And, and, that's and then the once they got there, they came across here. Right, and that's the Blackfoot cooking. And of course, then it, it, they, they're everywhere. Mm -hmm. and, and because sort of shooting or trapping them wasn't a very good option, or wasn't likely to happen here. Um, well, we have other things to do. Yeah. And you, you, if you're going to shoot beavers, you have to spend hours a day at it mm -hmm. and just wait until they show up. Once the pond leveler went in, John, did you notice a difference in the way that the water moved behind the dam and under the culvert? Well, it moved anyway, that which it didn't before. Okay. Uh, because the beavers were deep building the dam up a little deeper and a little deeper and a little deeper to, to stop it from running over. Uh, only in the case of uh, snow melt in the spring or else a heavy rainfall, sometimes it'll go over the dam, but they would fix it immediately. That's one thing the beavers will do. They'll keep that dam uh, in top condition. It's their number one uh, priority. Uh, I, these um, pond levelers that you use here uh, definitely have them baffled. Um. One of the reasons that we, of course, asked you to share your story with us and for, for us to monitor this site is to sort of start to see how some of these uh, alternatives, like the pond leveler, how they can kind of help alleviate some of the problems that the beavers have caused, particularly for livestock producers and farmers, and just, you know, try them out, see how they can help us live. Even though there are, the beavers still cause challenges, how they, we can help sort of live with beavers and, and mitigate the problems they cause. And so, um, even... I realize that we have to learn to live with them. Mm -hmm. They're not going to go away. Yeah. They're here, they've been here for thousands of years. There was a, a time when they were all trapped out. Mm -hmm. That was, I guess, a period of maybe a hundred years at the most. And uh, we'll just have to learn to live with them yeah. along the creeks. I know there was a number of dams blown in this uh, creek to the north here this year, and but that's just a temporary measure because yeah. they'll be back. Right, exactly. They can multiply faster than we can. <laughs> yeah. <That's> <laughs> Their families are bigger. For sure, for sure. While you're all here, I would like to point out that because of the uh, gas well, uh, gas line crossing the, the creek, and because of the um, telephone line crossing the creek, I would like to see you include your study into the, the whole half mile so okay. that you can see what happens with As the gas line are. crossings and with the telephone wires crossing. Because this isn't the only one, it, it, will, it will get more 
-hmm. as our population increases. Right. And more different different places. Uh, this is probably as much as they'll ever do here because this gas field is pretty well depleted. But the telephone lines and so on will come more and more as the population of Edmonton moves out this way. Right. Yeah, well, that's something we can totally do, for sure. Yeah. And I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to sound off. I, I'm an old man. I've seen a lot of changes. And there's going to be changes again in the coming years. How you will learn to live with these beavers without just abandoning your creek side, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Yeah. There's going to have to be some changes in thinking, no question about that though. Right. I'm Kevin Smook, I'm Reeve of Beaver County. I live north west of Towfield and uh, am involved in helping make decisions on behalf of the county and one of the big decisions is uh, control of the land so far as, I guess, land flood control. We uh, make decisions and pass that on to our agricultural department and ask them to, to carry out those assignments and, and they'll bring ideas to us as well. Sure. We find uh, competing forces in nature with primarily acreage owners uh, versus agricultural producers. The acreage owners, uh, it's more densely populated with people and so your solutions to controlling beaver issues are somewhat limited versus in the wide open areas where, you know, more traditional methods of controlling the beaver populations uh, been utilized in the past. Uh, but there have been big changes. We've uh, come across a fairly good system. We've, we partner with the University of Alberta, Augustana campus, and Dr. Glennis Hood, who uh, convinced us to try pond levelers in the past, and that's worked really, really well, we think, especially in the highly populated areas, people population, mm -hmm. uh, because we can put those in and kind of control the level of the water and the it helps control the population of the beavers in the area and it seems to be a good fix for sure in that area. Out in agricultural area it's a little bit more experimental and you have a little bit more um, resistance to it maybe uh, because the old time solution was just get out and blast the beavers away but they come back and uh, hopefully with the pond levelers in those areas we can continue to see where it helps control that population and instead of trying to annihilate it, and then they're all coming back anyway. Right. And can you speak to um, this new approach, having using pond levelers, more of the coexistence approaches, um, can you speak to it from an operational and cost perspective for a municipality? Are you finding that you're, it's costing you money or costing you less money? Just any comments you have on how, this new tool? Well, what we found is uh, we, we are waiting for some uh, more study results to come back from the university study, but really when you put a pond leveler in, um, once it's in, it's, it's there. They're very stable and, and you don't really have many recurring costs versus sending uh, equipment in and, and uh, blasters in to blow up dams and such. Well, we all know that when you uh, take a dam out, um, you can go back there the next day and surprisingly enough, they're, the dam's back. How'd that happen overnight? Well, um, that all comes at a cost. So the pond levelers, yeah, there's an upfront cost, but over time we believe it's going to save money in, uh, you know, machinery and labor to have to deal with that problem and also the headaches. Mm -hmm. uh, it should decrease the amount of headaches we have from having to deal with the recurring problems. Would you have any advice for other people like yourself who are working in other municipalities across Alberta about things you've learned in, on this journey of trying to coexist with beavers? Not every resident uh, thinks the same and has the same uh, love or disdain for beavers. So that's something that uh, you'll never get away from, I don't think. But in today's world, where we're all, you know, thinking more green and uh, more environmentally sensitive, I, I think uh, 
uh, it's the way to go uh, to go down this road. We're very fortunate to have an excellent agricultural department at Beaver County with Amy Boise and Mike Bates and and uh, they'll bring ideas forward to County Council and we'll weigh the options and more times than not we support what they want to do. They see where they're trying to be innovative and and uh, try and um, lead us with uh, great ideas and, and examples of, of ways to, better ways to control the beaver population. So we're, we're very lucky. So Beaver County um, was able to uh, work with Augustana campus of the University of Alberta and Dr. Glennis Hood and her research team. And we identified um, problem sites within the county where we'd had chronic issues. And what I mean by chronic issues is areas where we've either had to go in and blast multiple, multiple times. We've had to have the backhoe in multiple times. Or we've had to have um, mul uh, our crew in there dragging and, and removing debris from the culverts. And over time that costs an awful amount of money um, and it, it really is a strain on the, the program or the system. And so using the levelers at those um, locations where we've had these chronic issues, we've reduced the amount of work that our staff has actually had to do. And now it's a drive by, make sure the monitors or the levelers working, monitor the situation, and then off they go again. And so of the sites we've had to go back to, the research team has only had to sort of tweak two of them just to make sure that the le the the device was actually in the right place and then after that we've actually as a county had to not do any work at any of these sites so we haven't touched them um, which has been a benefit to us so how, how many did you say how many we have 14 within the county right now um, to a couple of them are, are double systems like the one you see here. Um, it required a double length of pipe because it, we're so far away from the culvert. In most cases, the pipe is really close to the culvert because that's where the beavers are damming up. Um, this one's a sort of a, a bit of a different situation because the, the dam is so far away. So I think from a monitoring standpoint, one of the things that the university students have been looking at is invertebrate samples and uh, just the general biodiversity of the area. And we've noticed that these areas, typically what happens is when you go in and you remove it with a backhoe, you clear out all that vegetation, you clear out all that debris. And if you're doing that multiple, multiple times, that system is not allowing itself to regrow or regenerate. In this case, when we can leave the dam intact, we're allowing that vegetation to sort of fill in and, and should I say, make a true wetland. You know, it's becoming back to its natural state of what it should look like. And it allows that vegetation to regrow and continue to grow.